dihydrogen. Position of hydrogen in periodic table. Well, this is modern periodic table or long form periodic table. An arrangement of atoms in periodic table is related to their atomic number. Hydrogen is number one, so it is given the first position. And hydrogen is with first group, that is lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. Position of hydrogen in periodic table. Hydrogen. In modern periodic table, arrangement of element is related to atomic number. Hydrogen atomic number is 1. Therefore, position of hydrogen is first. Well, in, in this modern periodic table, you will find 7 periods and 18 groups. This is related to their electronic configuration. You know there are seven orbits, so there are seven periods. If element is in the first period, that means there is only one orbit. If element is in second period, there must be two orbits in element. If there are, if element belong to third period, then there are three orbits in element. And the outermost cell will be third. Similarly, when element belong to first group, it can show plus one valency. When element belong to second group, it shows plus two valency. It is like that. So, this way, elements are classified according to their valency and electronic configuration. Well, hydrogen is number one. And it is with first group, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. Why? Because hydrogen is similar to alkali metals. That is why hydrogen is with alkali metals. Comparison with first group. If you see lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, etc., their common configuration is NS1. So there is only one electron in outermost cell of these elements. And hydrogen has also one electron in outermost cell. Therefore, it is similar to alkali metals. Capacity to lose number of electrons. Well, alkali metals lose one electron because they have only one electron in outermost cell. Similarly, hydrogen can release one, one electron. And that is why hydrogen and alkali metals have electropositive character. Valency. Lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium. Common configuration is NS1 and P. So they can release only one electron. And common oxidation state or valency is plus one. Similarly, hydrogen is 1S1. So hydrogen can donate only one electron. So its valency is plus one. Oxidation state. Hydrogen shows plus one oxidation state. All other alkali metals also shows plus one oxidation state. Affinity for non-metal. Hydrogen can combine with chlorine. Like alkali metals also combine with chlorine and form salt. Hydrogen combine with oxygen. Two hydrogen combine with one oxygen. Similarly, two alkali metals combine with one oxygen. Hydrogen combine with sulfur. In this case, two hydrogen combine with sulfur. So, two alkali metals also combine with sulfur. Chemical properties. Alkali metal forms stable oxide, peroxide, halide and sulfide. Sodium oxide, sodium peroxide, sodium chloride, sodium sulfide. Hydrogen also forms stable oxide, peroxide, halide and sulfide like H2O, H2O2, HCl, H2S. Alkali metals, strong reducing agent. So sodium immediately react with chlorine and form NaCl. In this reaction, sodium is oxidized, therefore it is oxi reducing agent. The one which is oxidized is reducing agent. Therefore, sodium is strong 
reducing agent. Hydrogen is also strong reducing agent. Why? Because it immediately react with chlorine in presence of light and produce 2 HCl. So in this reaction, hydrogen is oxidized. Therefore, it is strong reducing agent. Reducing nature. Copper oxide reacts with hydrogen and produce copper. So here copper is reduced by hydrogen. Similarly, copper oxide reacts with sodium and produce copper. That means sodium also reduces copper. Now there is some differences with alkali metals. Physical state. All alkali metals are solid. While Hydrogen is gas. Chemical bond. Alkali metals have metallic bond. Hydrogen has covalent bond. Atomicity. Hydrogen is diatomic, while alkali metals are monoatomic. Nature of oxide. Oxide of hydrogen is neutral, H2 is neutral while oxides of alkali are basic in nature. Nature of compounds. Hydrogen with halogen form low boiling covalent compounds, while halides of alkali metals are high melting point ionic solids. Ionization enthalpy. Lithium first ionization enthalpy is 520, which is very low, but hydrogen ionization enthalpy is 1312 kilojoule per mole, which is very high. Now, comparison of hydrogen with halogen. Chemical bond. Halogen has covalent bond, like fluorine, fluorine, chlorine, chlorine, bromine, bromine, iodine, iodine. Similarly, hydrogen also has covalent bond. Physical state. All are diatomic molecules. Fluorine and chlorine in gaseous state, bromine liquid, and iodine is solid. Hydrogen is in gaseous state. Ionization potential. Hydrogen is 13.5, fluorine is 17.5, chlorine 13, 11, bromine 11.82, iodine 10.43. So all elements having very high ionization potential. Similar covalent compounds. Carbon combined with 4 hydrogen form CH4. Similarly, halogen combined with carbon and form CCl4. Silicon combined with 4 hydrogen. Silicon also combined with 4 chlorine. Valency. Hydrogen can accept 1 electron, so minus 1. Halogen can accept 1 electron, so they are also minus 1. Electrovalent compound. This is sodium hydride, calcium hydride. Similarly, halogen also form electrovalent compounds, NaCl, calcium chloride, etc. Covalent compounds. Hydrogen with carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus form covalent compounds. Halogen also form covalent compounds. Oxidation state or number. Compounds. Sodium hydride, where oxidation number of hydrogen is minus 1. Sodium chloride, where oxidation number of chlorine is minus 1. Sodium bromide, oxidation number is minus 1. Ionization enthalpy. Fluorine is 1680 kilojoule per mole. Hydrogen, 1312 kilojoule per mole. So these are some similarities. Halogen forms halide ion by receiving an electron. Hydrogen forms hydride ion by receiving electron. Halogen forms stable halide salt with metals. Hydrogen forms hydride with metals. Differences. Hydrogen is also different from halogen. Halogens are most reactive than hydrogen. Halogens are strong oxidizing agents while hydrogen is strong reducing agent. Halogens with metals form salt, 
while hydrogen forms unstable hydrides nature of oxide halogen oxides are acidic hydrogen oxide is neutral in hydrogen there is no lone pair of electron while in halogen contain lone pair of electrons thus hydrogen resemble as well as differ with both the groups and therefore hydrogen is not like alkali metals due to high value of ionization potential and it is not like halogens due to low value of electron affinity h2 is neutral and it is basic cl2 is acidic so its position is not fixed so known as rock element so hydrogen is called rock element because it is not included with any other functional group therefore the best choice is hydrogen should be kept separately from all other functional groups h plus ion cannot exist on its own hydrogen it has one nucleus and one electron when you remove electron from hydrogen atom only proton is left radius of hydrogen is 37 picometer while radius of h plus ion will be only 1.5 into 10 to minus 3 picometer so it's not having free existence only proton cannot exist on its own h plus can combine with h2o and form h3o plus which is known as hydronium ion or oxonium ion so in aqueous solution when any acid release h plus ion it will not remain as h plus but it will join with h2o and form h3o plus ion preparation of hydrogen laboratory preparation zinc in laboratory if you mix zinc and acid like hcl or h2so4 then hydrogen gas released zinc copper alloy is used to enhance reaction rate zinc also react with alkali mat solution like sodium hydroxide and forms sodium zincate and hydrogen gas now some questions in the laboratory for the preparation of hydrogen from granular zinc why the following acids cannot be used and which is the most suitable acid for this purpose concentrated sulfuric acid concentrated hcl and nitric acid cannot be used in laboratory to prepare hydrogen from zinc metal first why not concentrated sulfuric acid because concentrated h2so4 is not used because it a part of the acid gets reduced to sulfur dioxide so h2so4 is reduced by hydrogen and it will produce sulfur dioxide so it will destroy sulfuric acid plus hydrogen gas is consumed hydrogen liberated by the action of concentrated hcl on zinc will be impure as it will contain fumes of volatile hcl moreover zinc chloride form is insoluble in concentrated hcl so it will form a coating of zinc and the reaction stops after some times so hcl plus zinc gives at zinc chloride plus hydrogen but concentrated hcl is not used concentrated nitric acid plays a double role it act as an acid and as an oxidizing agent the hydrogen first reduces the nitric acid into various oxides so now hydrogen which released reacts with hno3 and produces no2 as well as no and therefore we cannot use nitric acid so the most suitable acid for production of hydrogen in laboratory is dilute sulfuric acid hydrogen from water cold water when sodium amalgam is added to water you will get hydrogen gas hot water or stream when zinc is treated with steam you will get zinc oxide plus hydrogen gas 
when red hot iron and steam are mixed you will get hydrogen gas hot coke reacts with steam and produce water gas by action of water on ionic hydrides well h minus when react with h2o it release hydrogen gas for example sodium hydride when added to water you will get hydrogen gas lithium hydride also produce hydrogen gas calcium hydride that is hydrolith which release hydrogen gas sodium boron hydride also produce hydrogen gas by the reaction of methane and steam methane reacts with steam and produce hydrogen gas by electrolysis of water water is a bad conductor of electricity water is made a conductor either by addition of an acid or an alkali industrial production of hydrogen electrolysis of water take acidic water add dilute hcl h2so4 or hcl and put this to electrode anode is positive where oxidation takes place cathode is negative where reduction takes place so oxygen gas released at anode and hydrogen gas released at cathode that you can collect this is the reaction sulfuric acid in dilute solution ionized to give 2h plus and so4 minus 2 cation transfer to cathode and anion goes to anode at anode sulfate ion cannot be oxidized therefore water is oxidized which release oxygen gas and solution become acidic cathode water is reduced and produce hydrogen gas so cell reaction is h2o on electrolysis release oxygen gas and hydrogen gas this is a net reaction acid and base which are produced during anodic reaction and cathodic reaction they neutralize themselves so reaction in cell is this and therefore net reaction is electrolysis of water electrolysis of barium hydroxide aqueous solution in presence of nickel electrodes this is pure preparation of pure hydrogen well electrolysis of barium hydroxide with nickel electrodes barium hydroxide ionized to barium plus 2 and oh minus barium plus 2 transfer to cathode oh minus to anode at anode oh minus not oxidized then water is oxidized releasing oxygen gas cathode barium plus 2 is not reduced so water will be reduced and produce hydrogen gas so net reaction is electrolysis of water which release oxygen gas and hydrogen gas barium hydroxide is prefer to NaOH or KOH because if CO2 is absor absorbed then barium hydroxide reacts with CO2 and form solid barium carbonate and settle down so carbon dioxide will not interfere in the process manufacturing of NaOH that is electrolysis of brine solution take aqueous solution of NaCl which ionized to give Na plus aqueous and Cl minus cation transfer to cathode anions transfer to anode anode chloride ion is oxidized to chlorine gas release two electron cathode sodium will not be reduced therefore water is reduced and release hydrogen gas so net reaction is chlorine gas released at anode hydrogen gas released at cathode and aqueous solution become as basic reaction of steam on hydrocarbons well when hydrocarbon is treated with steam it will produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas for example methane with steam gives carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas a mixture of co and h2 known as water gas synthesis gas or steam gas boss process 
that is also known as coal gasification. Synthesis of steam gas from coal. Coal, on treatment with steam at 1270 Kelvin, produce carbon monoxide plus hydrogen gas. Water gas, shift reaction. Water gas react with steam at 673 Kelvin and produce CO2 plus H2 gas. CO2 is removed by scrubbing with sodium arsenide solution. And this way you get pure hydrogen. By heating methanol. Methanol on heating at 7, sorry. Methanol on heating at 673 Kelvin, 50 bar in presence of cuprous oxide will get carbon monoxide plus hydrogen. Hydrogen from alkalis. Well, zinc reacts with alkali like NaOH and produces hydrogen gas. Aluminium gives hydrogen gas. Tin, plumbum, silicon also produce hydrogen gas. Euner's method. Aluminium reacts with KOH. An aqueous solution gives hydrogen gas. The method is used for military purpose. Lens process or gassing reaction. Take iron, is regenerate, uh, iron which is treated with steam for 10 minutes and will get ferrosopharic oxide or magnetic oxide plus hydrogen gas. Iron is regenerated by reducing magnetic oxide with water gas. This reaction is called vivifaction and the time allotted for this reaction is about 20 minutes. Production of hydrogen 77% from petrochemicals, 18% from coal, 4% from electrolysis of solution, 1% from other sources, preparation of steam gas from sewage, sawdust, scrap wood, newspaper, etc.